play with events. Uh, we have uh, finished for now, anyway, with parabolas and linear functions, and we're moving on to hyperbolas. Um, hyperbolas, okay, I'll write down what they look like, just to begin with, well, not what they look like, but as a function. The one that we're going to deal with anyway this year is a over x plus q. So this, as far as I know, the first time we come across an equation where the x is in the denominator, a over x plus q. So we're going to, our aim for the next few lessons is to try and uh, be able to draw these things. Okay? Uh, and as just as a starting point, uh, let's look at these two equations, y equal 1 over x and y equal 2 over x. And uh, what I'm going to ask you now, in a minute, just pause me, and then uh, for these values of x, from minus 3 all the way to plus 3, write down the y's, and then sketch it on the graph. So you'll have two graphs. Or sketch them on the same graph. Okay? So you'll have two graphs to sketch. Okay? Alright guys, so pause me now, and then uh, do that. It's important that you do that. When you draw it, and you take your time, especially for a new function, you really get the feel, feel of the of, of the graph, of the function. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, so the guys here work really well and they plotted the graphs. I've also added uh, a value of x equal half to find out the y's. And, and this is what we got. Okay? Uh, now, obviously, the, the, the obvious thing, the obvious problem is that 1 over 0, we have a problem with that. It, it gives you an error message. So, uh, what is 1 over 0? What does it mean? And you know, you've learned from, from primary school that you were told, don't divide by 0, you're not allowed to divide by 0. So today we find and figure out what does it mean to divide by 0. Okay? Um, to get a feeling of what, what, what's happening, what, what is 1 divided by 0, that's why I've added that x equal half. And you can see when x equal half, y is 2. Uh, and x equal minus half y is minus 2. So this graph, okay, and hopefully uh, if, if I ask you to find out what happens to y when x is a quarter, x is uh, 1 over 10, x equal 1 over 100, that number is just going to get higher and higher and higher. And this number is going to get lower and lower and lower and lower. It's never touched. Yeah. I've never touched. You're right. Okay? So just let's say y equal 1 over, let's say when I want to find out when x is equal to uh, 1 over 1,000. Okay? So what would be 1 divided by 1 over 1,000? I'll get fraction. How do we flip fraction? Remember how would we do that? 1 divided by 1,000. Just 1,000. The answer will be 1,000. Okay? I'm flipping that, that uh, uh, fraction. Okay? So when x is 1 over 1,000, 0, 0, 0, 1, the y will be 1,000. So you can see it just jumps up here. Just like, and Oli, you mentioned that, just like in the tan graph, okay? We've got a vertical asymptote, okay? We use that, I used that word, I did use that word, I think, in the graph, okay? It's a vertical asymptote. The y-axis is actually a vertical asymptote. Okay, I'm not going to write it because I'm probably going to misspell it. Okay? What does an asymptote mean? The graph gets closer and closer to it, approaches it, but never really crosses it. Okay? So these two lines don't connect to each other. Okay? On the left side of the y-axis never touches the right side. Okay? They get as close as possible to the y-axis, one over there, one over here, but they never really crosses it. Does that make sense? Okay? So 1 over 0, just incidentally answering, what is 1 over 0 equal to? Infinity. Infinity. Okay? Infinity. Okay? It's, think about the biggest number ever, bigger than that. Okay? It's infinity. Okay? We don't have a real number that can express one, what is 1 over 0. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, I didn't, I didn't ask you... Uh, but let's talk about intercepts, okay? We just realized that this graph is never going to cross the y-axis, right? Because the y axis is the asymptote. So it doesn't have a y-intercept, right? It's never going to touch it. What about the x-intercept? Okay? Will it ever touch the x-intercept? Let's think about it. I'm just going to pause here. Okay, so how do we know if there is an x-intercept? 
can't even remember if I said the Y. There's definitely no Y intersect there because we just said that the graph doesn't cr cross with the Y. So there's no Y intersect. But is there an X intercept? How do we find okay, if there's an X intercept? What we have to do is substitute zero for Y. Okay? Okay? Whenever it crosses the X intercept, in that point, Y is equal to zero. So I need to solve that equation. I substitute for Y is zero. And I need to solve that. But how would I solve 0 equal 1 over x? How do I do that? I'm going to multiply by x and divide by 0. So I'm going to swap the 0 and the x, the zero and the x places. So x equal 1 over 0. So what is 1 over 0 we just said? Infinity. In other words, we, the y-intercept is always only going to be when x is infinity. In other words, it's never going to happen. Okay? So x, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the y will get smaller and smaller and smaller, as you can see. It will get closer and closer to the x-intercept, but never really reach it. In other words, we've got another asymptote. Okay? This is also an asymptote, and this is a little bit different to the tan graph. The tan graphs only have vertical asymptotes, but hyperbola also have a horizontal asymptote. Okay? That graph is going to get always closer and closer and closer to it, but never really reach. Are we alright with that? Okay, so let's pause here for a second. Okay, so I've added the second graph, y equal 2 over x. Okay, so now we playing with the a. The mother graph that we start with, we always start with the mother graph with y equal 1 over x. Now we're playing with that a. Okay, and as you can see, hopefully you guys do it at home as well. Okay, that 2 means that the graph moves a little bit above, above that mother graph. Okay, above on the right on the positive side and below on the negative side. That kind of makes sense. It just makes all the y's a little bit bigger. Okay, without doing it, without doing anything, what do you reckon if we had y equal half x? 1 over 2x or half an x? What would, what would make... What would be compared to the green? It will be a bit closer to the axes. Okay? So if I had to draw this graph, okay, I'll draw maybe in blue, y equal 1 over 2x, which is half x, it's going to be something like this. Okay? Alright guys? Okay, pause again. Alright, so the last question, okay, and I'm not going to make you draw it, uh, like find out the y value because we're clever we'll figure out without actually doing all the donkey work okay so if this is y equal 1 over x we need to learn how to draw it okay we often going to draw these little arrows to show that it carries on carries on to infinity without actually stopping okay we've got a vertical asymptote uh, uh, a y asymptote uh, a horizontal asymptote sometime we will need to write down what are the names of these asymptotes? Okay, before I move on to the next bit, let's just go back a little bit. Okay, how do we call this vertical asymptote? How do we call this? So I can, I can ask in a, in a test, what is the vertical asymptote? Okay, but the vertical, not the horizontal, the vertical. Y axis. You want to say Y axis, right? That's what you want to say. Yes, but that, I've got another name for it. How can I call the y-axis? I can give it the name, which is white and blue, okay? I can call it x equal, what is x equal along this vertical axis? Well, we did it zero. Yeah. zero, okay? So that is your vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote, okay? And then if I ask you what's the horizontal asymptote, that will be? y equals 0, okay, y equals 0 will be your horizontal asymptote. It's a bit confusing, isn't it, because it's like the x-axis, but that's actually y equals 0. But that's not really where I was going. Where I was going is, how can we plot y equals minus half, minus 1 over x, without writing, okay, let's find out x, let's find out y for x equal 1, 2, 3. What does it do, and we did talk about it, when I add a minus in front of the function? What do I do? What is that? Okay, so all it does that, we are reflecting over which axis? Um, the x-axis. Okay, by putting a minus.
minus, basically we're saying that each value that was positive, okay, now will become negative. The same value of x now will become negative. So this, if this was, let's say, uh, uh, plus a third, now will be minus a third. Plus a half will be minus a half. Bum, 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 bum. We're going to have this branch will flip down. What about this branch? We'll flip up. So y equals minus half x, we're just flipping, okay? We're flipping both branches, okay? We still have the same vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, we just flip the crosses, okay? Okay, so now to finish up this lesson, we know how to draw y equal a over x. We don't know q yet, but we know a over x, okay? The bigger the a is, the more further away from the axes. If I have a negative a, it flips it. Okay? You guys can tell me, we'll not do it now, but what is that plus q? What does that plus q do? It would be vertical. Okay. Right, but that will be next lesson. Okay, that's it. Bye bye. See you next lesson. Let's go, go home.